What is up my fam bam? How you doing out there? What is going on in your neck of the woods? Ashley here with AHM Artistry and in today's video I'm going to be doing a little get ready with me while I answer some of your guys' questions about our RV road trip that we just went on and kind of telling you just about my whole experience, all the places that we went to, what we saw. I even have some video footage and some pictures to show you guys along the way in this little video and let me tell you guys, let me be real, I had every intention to do like a full on like RV series because we just rented the RV for the very first time and I wanted to show you like preparation and like what I pack on my vacation for like beauty stuff and I had some beauty videos that I planned on filming while we were on our trip like get ready with me in the woods get ready in a tiny bathroom all that fun stuff but life kind of happened right before our trip it was very 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 crazy I got sick my daughter got sick and then we have some family stuff that's going on that I'm not really gonna go into right now but it was crazy to say the least so we're kind of lucky that we just made it on the trip as it is and you know what i just hung back enjoyed the scenery enjoyed the trip had an amazing time with my daughter and my husband and then the people that we met up with along the way some family and some friends so i figured i would share some of it with you guys today go through my giant skincare makeup bag that I brought, show you guys what I actually used, which spoiler alert isn't much, and I'm gonna be applying some stuff to my face. So it gives you guys something to look at while we talk in case you don't really care about my trip and you're just here to see some makeup. I got the best of both worlds for you, baby, because you know I love makeup but I also like talking about when I travel and stuff like that. So anyways, if that all sounds good to you guys, then you know what to do. Yes, that's right. Sit back, hang tight, and keep on watching. Now, first things first, Amaryllis. I'm gonna show you what's in this giant bag. I just dropped my phone, whatever. If you do like this bag, I got it at Marshall's, but it was last year, but I've seen some and I've seen some in different colors. It holds so much, first of all. This is what I usually travel with. It is crazy. This isn't all makeup, don't worry. However, I did definitely bring way more makeup than I needed to, but I still had had hope that I would find some time and some mental motivation to film, but alas. So uh, I'm gonna put on some of my skincare over here. Let's talk about a couple things that I brought along the way, and then we'll start talking about the actual trip. So I brought the Yes 2 Cucumber Wipes because I didn't have enough time to order my favorite Tarte Wipes before the trip because like I said, life is crazy, but um, I needed something to clean my face at the end of the day, and this was recommended a little, a few months ago. Somebody said, the coconut ones are terrible, you're right, but try the cucumber. So I grabbed the cucumber at Target. It was nice. I didn't really like it that much for removing my eye makeup because when I have to remove my eye makeup and if I'm wearing a lot, it kind of burns a little bit, but this was fine just for like daily facial wipe, just for cleaning at the end of the day. Because let's be real, you guys, be real, real. I did my makeup uh, twice, but more like one and a half times because the first time I did my makeup was the day that we were on our way up there and I was like, I'm bored, we're driving, my husband's driving the RV, let me go ahead and do my makeup, let's see what we can kick out. And I just did a really simple like BB cream stuff that I'll show you, which is a very simple makeup look and it wasn't like crazy intense. I think I did a neutral eye, nothing crazy. So it worked fine for that, but that's when I was trying to remove mascara and it kind of burned a little tiny bit, but I'm super, 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 super sensitive to wipes. So that doesn't mean everybody will be, I just am. But it worked great for all the other days when I just needed to clean my face off, but I didn't want to do the water and soap situation. So that was nice for that. And then the other time that I wore makeup, you guys, all I did was a little tiny bit of mascara, some lip gloss, and maybe pencil and some brows a little bit. That was it. I didn't use any of this, like half this bag over here, but I'm gonna show you what I brought anyways, cause I have what we call delusions of grandeur. Anybody else do that on trips? Cause that's like always me. So I brought all my Jan Marini products cause I do not want to stray from that regimen and everything has been working amazing. My esthetician recently added the Luminate to my skincare regimen to help really lighten up the discoloration and the little bit of a texture that I still have. So that's been helping a lot. I don't know if you guys can tell if you like pay really close attention, but it's lightened up a lot. So I was supposed to go on this a long time ago and I just finally got around to doing it, but here we are. So I live in Southern California. That is where we began. We went all the way up through the coast of California, all the way up to my friend Liz up in Humboldt. 
and spent a couple days up there. We went around up to Oregon, had some family up there, and then we went to Lost Lake, Oregon, which I'll tell you guys all about. It's amazing. And then we cut over to Idaho and went back down around through Zion, Utah. So it was super awesome. I it was so it was so much fun, you guys. So much fun. I highly recommend it. It was great. I think I'm gonna be crazy today. I think I'm gonna go in with my face first, just because I feel like it. I don't think I'm gonna do like a crazy eye look or anything because I am focusing on talking so for face products i brought the it cosmetics confidence in a foundation i've been really liking this and i actually like it even more now because i'm kind of using a little bit less if i overuse it i notice it picks up a little bit of texture on camera so less is more when it comes to this and i kind of let my concealer do the uh you know fill in the blanks kind of i brought the magic star concealer because i was trying to I had hopes of testing it out more for you guys, but I literally didn't use it once on the trip. So we're gonna use it again today. I've already used it since getting back from the trip. I've used it a couple times and it's nice. It's just, I don't really understand why it kind of creases under my eyes. I don't, I don't know yet if it's the powder that I brought or if it's the concealer. I still need to test that. We're not gonna test it today because I'm gonna use both of those. I'm using what I brought in my bag because I had every intention to test it out further for you guys. So let's talk while I slather all this face stuff on my face so I don't have to like go in between dance around. So first up, let's talk about how was the RV? One of you guys asked me, how was it? How was it? They might, they're kind of interested in doing it for themselves and they wanted to know if I ran into any issues that would be long time deal breakers for somebody that was looking to purchase or use it more often so first first timer RV here like first timer for my husband and me and we decide to go on a 12-day RV trip first of all that's a little bit ballsy of us I'm not gonna lie especially going 2,500 miles round trip <laughs> I, we were a little like, okay, I guess we sh we'll just, we're just gonna do it. We're kind of all or nothing people. So a lot of things recommend do a weekend trip to try it out first and see if it's for you, but we didn't do that. We wanted to go all for it. So originally when we were looking for renting an RV out, I mean, what's the number one RV rental place you guys can think of? Number one in the US is Cruise America. And honestly, we've heard a lot of bad things. I mean, our, my sister-in-law just this last summer rented it and had some bad experiences working with them and like customer service and a tire blew out and stuff. So I was a little nervous to do it through them, but I kind of was stuck and I couldn't really find any other places. But because I was searching, I had an ad pop up for Outdoorsy. Now, Outdoorsy is super, super, super cool, you guys. It's like Airbnb, but for travel trailers, for RVs, for Airstreams, like any kind of like recreational vehicles, and that was awesome. So I went to the site, it was all like super legit, and people will rent out their utility vehicles and you can rent it for X amount of time. Very similar to how Cruise America is, except usually the trailers and RVs are nicer. They're more up updated. Uh, the one that re-rented was a 2017 uh, Ford Ch Chasm. I don't know how to say the word. And so it was a front Ford cab and then it was a Chateau, Thor Chateau. 24 foot RV, very doable. It sleeps five, but there was only two and a half of us. And it was so easy to drive, first of all. I'm kind of like a grandma when it comes to driving. Like I go really slow. And so I was a little tiny bit nervous to drive it. And my husband's like, well, I'll do most of it. You just have to be able to do some. Once I drove it, you guys, it was like a piece of cake, especially in other states. Let me tell you, the roads are so much nicer outside of California and people drive a lot nicer outside of California. So there is some truth to that, I found out. We went through Outdoorsy and we rented it from a gentleman. Everything goes through the website, so you're never giving him like your license information. You're never giving him your insurance information. It's all done through the app and it's very legit. And they screen their renters and they screen their rentees. Renters, rent, rentors, whatever it is. People that rent it out, they screen. People that rent it from them, they screen. So, and they have to approve your trip too. So that was one of the things that we're like, well, we're taking a really long trip and far for the first time. And we put on their first time RVers and he approved it. He didn't have any issue. And when we talked to him, he's like, you'll be fine. It's gonna be great. So like, okay. So we did that. 
it was awesome. Everything went on really, really awesomely. Um, and the guy that we rented through, he was fantastic. And his RV was spick and span. It was beautiful, super well maintained, only a 2017, so not very old. Like the Cruise America ones are like, um, you know, kind of worn down. They've seen better days. They're very weared and paired, you know, worn and torn. So what I noticed I'm gonna do with this It Cosmetics to make it not as textured on my skin, I'm gonna start pumping it on the back of my hand like I used to back in the day and I kind of got away from that and I started spotting it all over my face. So I'm gonna take my Urban Decay Blurring Foundation Brush and put it on kind of like in a pat and swirl motion. And it's been working really well doing that. But anyways, back to the RV. So how was the RV, you ask? The RV was fantastic. Oh my gosh, we had such a good time. The amount of space for us was more than we even needed, honestly, but it was like perfect. Like it had so much storage, like every part that could be oh, like used was utilized in some way. It had like the bed in the back that was queen. It had a bed above the cab that was a queen and then the dinette turned into a full and then there was cabinets like throughout. There were probably at least three cabinets that we didn't even store stuff in and we brought all of our own food. We brought like games. We brought all oh, my toddler's toy, not all of our toys, but some toys. We, and like, you know, ton, tons of storage. It was great. Easy to drive. I actually really enjoy driving it. It was really fun. Like I've said, California was probably the most difficult to drive in and that's because they do a really crappy job maintaining their freeways here. So whatever. And then same thing, like I was worried about like passing trucks and stuff. No, it was fine. It was like, as long as you can drive a truck, you can drive this size RV, a little 24 footer, had backup cam and everything like that. So as far as that goes, it's a breeze. Now you asked, do we run into any issues that would be a long-term deal breaker for like owning an RV or traveling an RV? No, I mean, for us, we didn't. Every, it, honestly, it was a very amazing experience. And I'm sure if I traveled more in RVs, things would come up. Like if you got a flat tire, like you'd have to call roadside assistance because it has like massive tires and you can't get a hitch on there. So I guess that'd be like the only thing and like maintenance and stuff would be what deterred me. But we were talking about it, honestly. We liked it so much. We were considering doing that and maybe renting it out through Outdoorsy and stuff. But right now we're gonna put a pin on that. And then uh, the only thing with the RV, when we were in Zion, Utah, we stayed about eight miles from the entrance of Zion and we had no idea when you get to Zion, you guys, first of all, it's absolutely gorgeous there. We did that at the end of our trip and it's like red mountains, gorgeous, but you get into the town and it's like built up. It's like a resort town. It is gorgeous. It's so well maintained. It's so beautiful. There's so many different resorts you can stay at. Restaurants, shopping, super fun. Not like shopping like, you know, Sephora and Nordstrom's, just like, you know, cute. Like there's like that crystal shop I showed you guys on my Instagram. That was amazing. You know, like some, some touristy stuff, but just like nice clothing and things like that. So it was very cool in that respect. But what we ran into that night for dinner and even that afternoon when we drove into town was parking the RV was such a challenge because almost every parking lot said no RVs. And it's like, well, what are we gonna do? Cause we wanna enjoy this stuff too. And at night we ended up finding out that you could do the street parking in certain areas for RV and they don't, and it's fine. But during the day it was really congested. It's really crowded because everybody's trying to get into Zion. So that was probably the only challenge that we faced with the RV is just like where you're gonna park. But throughout the rest of the trip, we usually just went to shopping centers and parked like in the back and we parked along like three spaces as long as there was enough parking. So for us personally, that kind of made us think, well, maybe we would rather do a trailer, you know, and pull that. That way we could detach from our truck and take that into a town or wherever if we wanted to do that. So that's the only thing that I think you have to really think of if you're thinking about getting a an RV or a trailer or something like that is try to try to rent some of them out and see before you like commit to purchasing one is like what the best style is for you. We really like those cute little teardrop ones. I'll pop a picture up with you. I can see I saw one of them at the one of the RV parks we we're staying at and it was so so cute. It looked like the perfect amount of space because I'm all about being outdoors. I didn't we didn't weren't inside the RV that much except when we were traveling and Lost Lake was really cold but even then we were by the campfire most of the time. So we don't need much space and this this RV in particular was like so easy to hook up. 
you know, black tanks, gray tanks, if you don't know what that means, look it up, I'll tell you, it's the sewer line. Emptying that and stuff wasn't as bad as I thought. It was super breezy, super easy. So I could probably talk a whole video about all of this, but if you want to, if you have any other questions about it, definitely drop them down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Check out Outdoorsy if you guys are interested in renting an RV or a trailer, or even if you just want to dip your toes in the world to find out if that's something that you would want to do one day, check out Outdoorsy because it's great. Now the next question I have is where were the best hiking spots? Honestly, hun, I wish I could tell you, but I had little toddler legs hanging around me, so we didn't really do much hiking. Um, at all. She was very, very sick at the beginning of the trip. She was getting better and then two days into it, she got 102 fever. So that was a big bummer for her, you know, and for us, just everybody involved. That was super sad. She, had, she got better and everything. Just 24 hours of just, you know, sad, sad stuff. So it prevented us from doing some of that, but I wish that I purchased a toddler like hiking backpack thing. I don't know if you guys have seen those little apparatuses. I thought about doing it, but I was like, you know, she's fine. She can go on walks and stuff. We'll just do some light, easy, easy hiking. But because she was like, she wasn't sick anymore when we were at the places that we could hike. She was just like tired, you know, after you've had a cold and you're just like, I don't want to like do anything. It would have been so easy for me to throw her in the toddler hiking backpack and just like go boom but I didn't and I regretted that that's probably like my only regret from the whole thing is I didn't buy that beforehand and uh, we weren't like about to like run around three hours down the mountain to go to Walmart to do it we just enjoyed the situation we were in which you didn't even need a hike it was crazy you didn't even need to but you could there were so many and honestly you guys it was the beginning of May I would say it was it was great financially because so many things were cheaper even using doing the rent to the RV was cheaper at the beginning of May because it's not like season yet and my toddler only goes to preschool a couple days a week so she wasn't missing much school so that's why we did it during then but a lot of hiking trails were still closed in fact the day we got to Lost Lake in Oregon it was opening day for that campground and you guys we were one of three reservations there and it's a huge I don't like it's a huge campground they have tent camping they have cabins they have a ton of RV spots and we were one of three so like oh, 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 nobody there and it was amazing but uh, moral of the story is you were in the wilderness it felt like you backpacked into your RV spot but you happen to have all the luxuries of RV it was very spread out it was so beautiful Oh, it was so amazing. We did do a little hike on accident down to the lake because the lake's a little bit farther than you realize. So, but it was fun. A lot of it was snowed in. So it was quite the adventure that we took down there. It was super, super beautiful. Yeah, there was still snow in a lot of these spots. In fact, when we pulled up, they were like, I know you reserved this spot, but if your spot is full of snow, just pick another one. That's how much snow was still in these spots, not on the roads, but just like on the mountain. It was, yeah, it was really, really cool. I would say there's lots of good hiking around there, Lost Lake, Oregon, if you can ever get to it, or obviously Zion. We didn't go into actual Zion either because of our rig, so that goes back into doing a, either pulling, towing something, or doing a trailer, because Zion, you could take an RV deep into it, but there's like this wait time that you have to do because they there's a big tunnel that you have to go through to get into the actual park. But what we saw was beautiful. Honestly, it just made us say, you know what? Real soon, we're gonna just drive our own car and go there because it's only about six or seven hours from our house and we're gonna see it because oh, it's so gorgeous. Just the little bit that I saw, I was blown away. But obviously there's lots of good hiking there. And being May, after a crazy winter that they had, a lot of the trails were closed. So the Narrows were closed, Angel's Land. Angel's Landing was fine, but I ain't doing that. And I ain't doing that with a toddler. And then there's a couple other major hikes that were closed off. So it was kind of just like enjoy the scenery situation. Honestly, you guys, I just had so much fun just chilling, just sitting back, hanging out, sitting back, hanging out, sitting back, hanging out around the campfire. It had been, it's been too long. I grew up backpacking and hiking a lot and being very outdoorsy. And it's been a long time since we did that. I mean, me and my husband have only went camping like once in our relationship, which is crazy because we both like it we both enjoy outdoorsy things but 
we've been going other places and doing other things and then a toddler happens and then it's like well you can totally hike and camp and stuff with a toddler but there's just easier places to go you know so uh we really just sat by the campfire like as soon as, soon as like around four or five o'clock we light that fire and we just chill and we just hang out together and we just talked and did s'mores and just had like such a nice time and just enjoyed the different sceneries that we were around because we went through all the different climates you could except jungle quite frankly so we went from obviously southern california we stopped in napa because we have an aunt that lives there and she kind of showed us around downtown and stuff that was super cute and then we went up to humble after that because my best friend lives up there and she hung out with us a bunch and we kind of explored that campsite you guys okay i'm gonna highly recommend this campsite emerald forest and it's up near trinidad by patrick's point if you're familiar with the area and it was uh, so gorgeous. Oh my goodness, the redwoods, you guys. The redwoods are so rich and dense and you were just, it felt like when I was walking around that campground, it was like I'm in like a woodland fairy forest. Like Fern Gully, amazing and just beautiful. I highly recommend that if you're ever in Northern California. You can even rent out a cabin there. So they have tent sites, RV sites, cabins, everything. They have like a cute little retro arcade that was like built in like, the trees it was really really cool they had full service situation full hookups everything like that and it was like really close to the cute town of trinidad I highly recommend that um and then after that we went up to oregon we went to some family that is in lake oswego outside of portland they took us around portland in the evening and he showed us like the whole city and stuff and we passed by voodoo donuts and we passed by all that stuff in case you're wondering and then we went to Lost Lake right after that. I'm gonna set my pa my face with some powder. I'll be right back. Uh, can I just say, you guys, that this powder is fine. I think for my dry skin, it's pretty nice. It's not getting as oily with this combination as it was in the beginning. It's still got a little bit of shine, but I don't I don't really I don't really know what's going on with it yet. So I can't give you like a full update review. However, I don't like the contraption. It doesn't actually keep the powder in it always has powder even if i close it and there's like no powder left i'll go back to open it later and there's like a whole pile of powder in there so it's not doing a good job keeping it in it's like good in theory but it's not actually working now i brought a beauty blender to tap out under my eyes only because i didn't know what the situation was going to be like with water and i ended up like really hyping myself up about the rv way more than i needed to i like researched like crazy like hookups and all that stuff and this rv was so easy you guys it was like a little house on wheels you he filled up the fresh water tank for us and it took us five days to burn through that water if we didn't have hookups and it it was so easy you didn't have to have electricity to run the water or anything it worked on the water heated on propane so we had full water ac access and it was like i could have brought my beauty blenders i could have done a full phase of makeup if i had the time and energy too okay let's put some color back on this face because i'm looking like a wall quite frankly so we stayed in lost lake for two nights like i said we went on opening day it was just absolutely gorgeous i'll show you guys some pictures some little video that i have it was so quiet it was like placid like the lake was just placid and just beautiful and just picturesque it was so cool going through all the different climates and like different types of trees that was crazy because you have humble that's like rich in redwood forest and then i don't know what kind of trees were at lost lake oregon but they're a different type of pine tree so it was really cool the campground that we were at felt super secluded like you could hear every bird whistle you couldn't hear any Thing else other than nature and the wind in the trees which was super super cool oh I, I forgot to say the drive from Lake Oswego Portland to Lost Lake was so cool we drove along the Columbia River which goes so you have Oregon right here then you have the road you have the Columbia River and then Washington's on the other side so you're like driving along a state border for like two hours I want to say it was so cool and on the Oregon side you had all these waterfalls cascading down on the mountains that you drove along so pretty and then we look out on the lake and we see like bald eagle nests and like little bald eagles popping out it was like so cute you know they have little babies in there for sure we couldn't see those but we saw the body goals it was super cute and then you see or washington on the other side so that was a really neat experience 
and yes the drive there was beautiful it wasn't too bad i thought we were picturing that the road to lost lake would be this crazy windy road for like two hours but it wasn't it was like you have the very last town and like this orchardy farm town that you drive in and then maybe maybe a half an hour up slightly windy not even bad especially with an rv it wasn't bad then you can get to the lost lake and it was so cool it was so much fun so we stayed there we had some fun we did some like my husband bought a little nerf gun for my daughter and him to do and i did it too and we did some like target shooting with the squirt bottle so that was like fun to pass the time i brought like a ton of board games and cards and stuff but we didn't use any of that we kind of just explored and hung out and i thought i had this idea in my head probably just from hearing about it growing up and stuff that rvs and stuff you road trips you get kind of bored and you need lots of stuff to do that wasn't the case. I never in for a moment felt like I didn't have anything to do and I wanted to dive into the stuff that I brought to keep me entertained. I was like, everything happened so fast. Each day seemed to go by so fast and we were up early every day and it just, the time just goes so fast and it's just like, oh no, it's over. And I was never once bored. My daughter was never once bored. I did buy her like a couple, just like a little toddler tip. I bought her, made her like a little basket with some of her favorite toys and I bought a couple little like travel books and like activity things to do and like one new toy just so she had something like exciting and new you don't have to do that obviously but if you're worried about taking kids on a long trip and I mean long like every time we traveled it was a, like a seven hour drive and we would stop halfway through so I wanted to give her something to do something different something to kind of entertain her and that was very very helpful and it was fun and educational too oh p.s i'm using the smashbox contour palette that i didn't mention but i brought this giant contour palette because has everything i need as contour and highlights a million highlights probably way bigger than i needed to bring but i love it from the holiday collection the holidays contour highlight palette so next up we didn't actually venture into washington i have family in washington so i've been up there a couple times and it is absolutely amazing but we didn't do it on this trip because this trip we cut across to idaho to stay with some friends and check it out with some friends that moved there a couple years ago and it was really cool super super fun they took us to some fun spots uh, this little river i think called ritter island in idaho Idaho, this little river that we just hung out all day at. It was super fun. My daughter got to like play in the little river area. We got to see a snake. We got to see some fish, some spiders, some giant waterfalls. It was super fun. Okay, I'm gonna do my eyebrows really quickly and then jump back on because I can't talk and do my brows. I can barely talk and do the rest of my makeup at the same time, but I'll be right back. All right, there are the brows. For brows, I brought way more than I needed to, as with all this stuff. I did the Anastasia Dip Brow. I picked this up right before my trip because my Kat Von D Super Brow pomade is empty and I wanted to try this again and see how it goes and you know what I'm really loving it it's a tad bit dark right now because my roots are just done it's a soft brown shade but I like it and you know what it shows up better on camera because the other taupe shade I was using in my pictures it kind of looks greenish like a little too ashy so this one is doing better for pictures and stuff and uh that's what i need really so i also brought the anastasia brow wiz for like if i wanted to do my eyebrows on the go really quickly this is what i used the two times that i did my makeup this is what i used on the trip so that's good that i brought that because you just throw it on really quickly and then of course i brought my ColourPop brow boss yes it's still in the box because i have problems with letting go of things in boxes and <laughs> so i use that and i do like that but i don't use it yet i wait until the very end to do my brow gel because then they don't look so powdery i'm gonna go in with the huda beauty new nude palette because this is the eyeshadow palette that i usually bring if i'm not gonna do crazy looks and i want some beautiful new nude looks so i brought this along and i used a couple of the shades when i did the kind of bb cream makeup no makeup look i think i did like the play like that corally one and maybe just amped up my a little bit with that. I don't know what I'm gonna do today. Let's just see what happens when I slap it on my eyes and let's talk. So I did mention to leave your Instagram at if you wanted a shout out. So shout out to Needleworker94, which is Karen. She left a question for me and it said, I like this question a lot. Are you a mountain girl or are you a water girl? Well, I'm a little bit of both. I like it all, honestly. I like nature, I like stuff. I also like city. I'm like a little bit of everything. Okay, here's the thing. There are two sides of me, honestly. There's two sides of me. One side of me loves the ultra glam, all dolled up, full face of makeup, just came here to slay, honey. And then there's the other side of me that 
can just go no makeup for obviously like 12 days at a time, just roughing it, not a care in the world, easy breezy, lemon squeezy, going and enjoying nature. I want to say I didn't miss makeup, but I did. It's hard. I didn't necessarily miss it, like, because I had so much fun enjoying and exploring and having fun like that. But when I came back, I was like, yes, let me play with my makeup, you know, and slap it all on my face. So there's very much two sides of my personality and things that I love. And that is me. I can't say that I'm like just a mountain girl or just a water girl because I absolutely love the ocean and I love Hawaii. Now I'm not like a swimmer of the ocean or like a surfer or anything like activity wise like that. If we're talking more activity wise, I guess I would be more of a mountain girl in that regard because I love hiking and doing that kind of outdoorsy stuff just because I feel more safe. I don't know, but I shouldn't because mountain lions and bears and stuff. But I, and then I also love city. Like I love skyscrapers. I love Chicago last year so much when we went and I love San Francisco. So I kind of, like a little bit of it all i'm kind of greedy in that sense like i don't have one thing that i'm like i'm only this i i like everything i grew up in the mountains so that is probably where i feel most at home out of everywhere because i grew up in the mountains in the middle of nowhere and i love it i, I was talking to my dad about how I don't like living anywhere flat. If it's flat, like I get like claustrophobic. It's very opposite. Like people usually get claustrophobic like in mountains and covering and stuff. But if it's flat, if I can't see a mountain or if it's too far away, I'm just like, I gotta get out of here. Because probably where I grew up, I don't know. When I'm in the mountains, I just feel a sense of peace and settlement. To make a very long answer, I guess I would be kind of a mountain girl because even I went to the Bahamas for my honeymoon and it was gorgeous, but there were no mountains around. And it was kind of like, it felt weird. Even though I loved the ocean and the water, you just walk right in, it was crystal blue, clear. That was weird, but when we go to Hawaii, I feel like I'm at home and I'm at peace and it's oceans and there's mountains, so. I guess I'm a mountain girl. I guess I am. Oh, and you said in your question, or do you like it when the wa mountains and the water meet? Yes. That's me in a nutshell. You got it, Karen. You know what's up. Is that how you are? Because that's how I am. I love it. Yeah, and you're talking to here about Columbia River, George, and Mount Hood. So Lost Lake was at the kind of near the base of Mount Hood. It's in that area. So I'm sure you've been there before. If you have, let me know. Um, and then the Columbia River was so cool. So, so, so cool. Uh, I love you guys. Some of you guys have been like telling you my, your experiences and where you live and stuff and about that. And that just makes me even more excited for traveling. I can't wait. I probably shouldn't have done my makeup at the same time as this because I get really passionate and talk with my hands and it's hard to talk with your hands when you're using them to apply makeup, but we're already knee deep in this and we're gonna just continue on. So anyways, back to the itinerary. Kind of needed to break up our trip on the way back because from Idaho to Southern California was probably like over a 14 hour drive. So we needed to break it up and see some stuff. So we went down through the Utah way. We could have gone down through Nevada, but there just wasn't that much stuff that piqued our interest on the way back. And we kind of wanted to, you know, make use of our time because we had like, we had space like three days. I think it was three days to get back. So we decided to go through Utah because I've been to Utah a couple times and I love it. It is so gorgeous there's so many cool things i've been to bryce canyon it's amazing moab is so cool but i never been to zion and neither had my husband so i was telling him we should go there he was kind of like okay like we'll go i don't think he really like understood how cool it was and i honestly didn't understand how what level of coolness it was at so i found this rv place while we were traveling everything was like booked inside of zion or like closer to the edge so I found this Zion River Park. I and I'll, I'll link every place that everywhere that we stayed that I recommend down there. Well, everywhere we pretty much recommend. So I'll link it all down below, just so you guys can see in case you're going to be traveling or anything this summer. But it was so cool. It was like that was like a luxury RV park. Okay, there was like a full-on beautiful swimming pool, like gift shop. It was pretty much only RVs. I think there was a couple tent sites, but it seemed like it booked out like a year in advance, and it was like. They said there were no river spots, but I said, well, we'll take whatever we can get. And it was like one of the last spots open, but it was still actually next to the river. There was just like this little tiny, I won't even say hill, this little mound you had to go over and there was a river. So at night you could hear all the frogs and like 
the random bugs that were flying. I don't know. Some people might be creeped out by that, but I just love that sound. I just like that sound of just like earth movement and animals and nature. I mean, as long as it's not a growling mountain lion, I'm good. I just like the frogs and the just, you know, the river sounds. You know, some bayou sounds, you know, like when you're riding on Pirates of the Caribbean down through the beginning where you're going along the bayou and you hear everything, that's what it sounded like. But like I said earlier, it was about eh, 10 miles from the base, so we had to drive there. And it was an easy drive, honestly. It wasn't that far from it at all. Zion was amazing. I highly recommend. You know, we go to Palm Springs a lot and we're kind of thinking, let's go to Zion next time instead of Palm Springs because, you know, it's a little bit farther, but it's unique, it's different, and it's so hot. Even in May, it was so hot. So talking about the different climates we went to, we went through all the different types of pine trees down over to Flatland, Idaho area, all the way down to the desert heat. Hot, hot heat. So we were bundled up in Lost Lake. It was like in the 30s and 40s when we were there. It was freezing. All bundled up down to Lost Lake. Everything stripped off. Shorts, flip-flops, just like sunscreen up to the wazoo. It was totally different climates, but it was kind of cool like experience that. And it was also nice to pack away our winter stuff and just embrace the cold. And then we got back to Southern California, it was cold. It was so weird. Our weather's been so weird down here. So the next question was, is there anywhere that you would want to go back to now after seeing it? Uh, yes, yes. I can't say all of it because that's cheating, but no, I loved the whole trip. But off, number one off the bat, Zion, we didn't get to fully take advantage of that place. So we are planning on going back there, hopefully at the end of summer. We really want to do like just a little weekend trip. Like I said, it's in driving distance to us. So I really want to go there and just like explore, do a couple hikes maybe not take the toddler this time just so we can like go really and see stuff she would love it when she's older and she can see things but she's like three and the heat plus lots of hiking i think she'll have a much better time at grandma's right now but i would 100 percent go back there the emerald forest in humble that that specific site was so amazing and then we didn't even get to explore around there as much as we want to a lot of places we did like little you know concentrated amounts so i would go to some of these places and spend a longer time there lost lake we would go back but probably when it's warmer they don't allow any motorized boats but you can do like kayaks and rowboats and stuff and it was way too cold to do that right now i mean some people were but i'm like i don't want to do that so i would rather go in the summer when i can actually enjoy some of the things but if you want like some isolation and to feel like you are disconnected from the world, you are completely off the grid. There are no cell phone services there. And it was awesome for that. Oh, it was so cool. So I think number one, my gut is saying Zion because that's probably the most accessible to us. So we're definitely going to go back there real soon. But there's so many wonderful spots. It was just beautiful. But we're also kind of like, you know, we now we want to see some other parts. I love Colorado and my husband's never been, so I want to take him through Utah to Colorado and it just kind of gets the snowball rolling. We're just so excited to see some more stuff, you know. All right, just finished up my eyes and in case you're wondering what the heck is she doing with this palette, I went in obviously with Bare and just set my brow bone and then I went in with Lace, probably one of my favorite shades. It's a really pretty transition shade. And I, then I went in with Tease in the crease to deepen it up. I laid down some Daydream and topped it with some Infatuation for glitter and then deepened up my crease a little bit more mixed with Love Bite and Tease. And that's that on that, as Raw Beauty Christie would say. I love that saying. Please make t-shirts, Raw Beauty Christie. Not that you're watching my video, but please make t-shirts saying that because I'll buy them all. And then I did the same thing on the bottom. But just wanted to tell you that. Also for eyeliner, I brought probably way too many liners. And I brought way too much of all of it, obviously. But a girl can think and dream. I just like to be prepared, you know, just like with clothes. Actually, makeup, it's harder for me to pack than clothes. And I'm like, what, what eye look am I going to want to do? What I want to have options. I don't want to be like, oh, where's my thing? I even brought lashes. Girl, we ain't doing lashes today because the rest of the day I'm just hanging out the house. So I'm not doing lashes. I'm going to use my CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara. Uh, let's go in with that torch liner that I brought because you know it's my fave boo. I even brought hot pink like I was going to do some crazy look or something. I brought the Better Than Sex liner to use. I brought the LA Girl Black Glide On. I'm going to use that really quickly. And I don't think I should be talking with sharp objects near my eyeballs. So I'll be right back. All right, so for lippies, I brought um, a million nudes because obviously I have a problem. I'm gonna go in with the Milani Amore Satin Lippy in Luxe. I love this one. It is like a 
it's awesome affordable great it is like a total dupe for the stila stay all day and bossy look at that i mean hello perfect perfect i also brought like dose of color barren with me which is bright i brought a couple lip liners dude such huge as the grandeur bought brought some um this hood witch gloss from smashbox that i love and then the dose of colors lip it up in toast i recently got this and i do like it but it's a little more on the brown side so i'm not going to use it today i'm just going to go in with this really quickly super super simple and i have just one more question we have time for and i'm going to wrap up this video i just realized i forgot a couple blush on so i'm using the anastasia trio that i brought this is in pink passion these blushes are super underrated i love them okay there we go there we go okay so that's probably too much now oh goodness so lastly well let me show you the last bits that i have in here so i for the bb cream i brought the smashbox bb cream in light because i used to use this and i like it mine is probably a little bit old i need to throw it away but it still works pretty good. So I do like that one. It's nice, just a little more coverage than a tinted moisturizer. So I wasn't able to like use that on the daily. I had to do this when I still wanted a little bit of glam, but not like fully there. So that's when I use that. And then sometimes I top it with the Too Faced, what is this, the Cocoa Powder Foundation? I think these are discontinued, but uh, mine's pretty much uh, almost gone. So I brought that along because I used to do that combo, but quite frankly, the BB cream was enough and I just set it with the Magic Star powder. So I liked that. And then that day I did the Pacifica Liquid Cover for concealer because it's just light. This concealer, just to update you guys that watch me and my reviews and stuff, this is really good at covering some acne and some blemishes, which I had a little tiny couple of pimples over here before I left. So it covered up the little bit that I had left of those and then just adds a little bit of brightness. Do not overuse this concealer though because it will crease on you and get a little bit weird. But if you just use it sparingly, just in like more like covering up discoloration, redness, acne, it works great for that. Don't love it for under the eyes, but everywhere else, bang a rain, baby. And that, oh, spray. This is the last, this last makeup thing that I brought. My Catrice Dewy Glow Fixing Spray, obviously. Never used it, but brought it. And that is my little makeup look for this Get Ready With Me. Now I had one last question I wanted to answer and it was very simply put, what was your favorite part? Okay, again, I'm super annoying because I love the whole thing. But honestly, I'm gonna say my favorite part of the whole trip was sitting by the campfire wherever it was like wherever we had it we were sitting around it i just loved that like just being present just being and it's gonna sound so cheesy but just being like just talking just hanging out like having some laughs telling stories or just being quiet and watching the fire and watching our surroundings and just listening I loved that and it was probably like something deep embedded in our DNAs as humans to gravitate towards sitting around campfires or fireplaces or something that just makes you feel so calm and so relaxed and it's probably because we as humans have been doing that for a million years, but I loved that. Let me know if you guys like that too, just hanging around around campfire, either joking around, having some s'mores, roasting some food, or just being. Like just being in that present moment was awesome. And I loved that. That's probably my favorite part. And I officially miss camping so much. So we have like a million different ideas, different trips that we want to do. We might go up to um, the Sierras at the end of the summer. We might rent the RV from the same guy and do that again. We just, we have like a lot of different things we want to do. So I might throw this Hood Witch lip gloss on because why not? I'm feeling it. Oh yeah, I love it. Oh. So to kind of sum up the tail end of my trip, since I've kind of jumping around a little bit, sorry, and I'm like answering your questions, talking about the trip, doing makeup, everything. So we finished out our trip in Zion. That was our last destination. And then we hightailed it back to California where we are in Southern California. And you guys, overall, it was an awesome trip. I just, I highly recommend it. I definitely recommend that app Outdoorsy. We had a flawless experience. Everything went great. And if you haven't rented an RV yet and you've been wanting to, or a trailer or something, try it out even if it's for the weekend just try it out go somewhere local or not too far and just go be in nature and see if it's for you or just do what we did and book 12 days and just figure it out as 
see you go. We had some stuff booked out, like we knew our destinations and our routes, but you know what I mean? Like we just, we just balls to the wall. We just went, we just did it. And it was like, well, if we don't like it, we're just going to figure it out for 12 days. But we ended up really loving it. And it was super, I mean, as long as you like road trips and driving and stuff, then it's no problem. It was like, my husband was so surprised. He was like, this is so relaxing to drive. My parents live a little bit far from me. It's about a three hour drive roughly if there's no traffic. And that drive honestly seems longer because we have to deal with California traffic and it's a, you're in a smaller car and but the RV you're just like, I'm here, I'm driving, I got this. It was fun, it was fun to drive. It was fun playing the tunes and hanging out and stopping and having a snack and I don't know. I like exploring, I like adventure. If you like that too, then I think you should try RVing or tra trailer traveling or just do some tent camping obviously. And that's fun, that's it. I don't think I have anything else to say about that. I probably do, I'll probably later be editing and like, oh, I wanted to talk about this and I forgot. But if you have any questions about our trip, definitely leave them down in the comments below. If you happen to be watching this video and you've never seen my face before and you're like, what? Um, I'm me, hi, how you doing? I'm a cruelty-free beauty junkie and I post here on YouTube three times a week and if you wanna be part of this kooky crew, this fam bam that I have, then you can go down and hit that little red subscribe button and join us. I don't always take an hour to talk about things, but sometimes I do and that's just the way the cookie crumbles. So thank you all so much for sitting down and hearing about my experience and watching along with me and checking out the makeup that I brought and didn't use. And I hope that every single one of you out there have a great, beautiful, adventurous type of day. Okay? Have a good one. Have a good one. Bye!